this is not my world. I am a wheelies, sports bikes, skids, and a bit of off-road guy. Cruisers, new, new, strange, strange world. But you know what? I've been learning over the last 20 years that all motorbikes are actually pretty awesome. And I've been hanging out with my new cool tattoo mates and they've told me cruisers are the way to go. So I'm not quite ready to paint my arms yet, but I want to have a look at these new Indians. These are the, the Chiefs, Chiefs, Chiefs. I think the Indian Chief range, that'll do. There are three new Indian Chiefs. There is the Super Chief, which is the touring long distance bike, big screen, panniers, feet right forward, comfy long distance cruiser. Then you've got the Bobber, the Dark Horse Bobber, which is kind of easy rider throwback, big high ape hanger bars. And then the one next to me, the Dark Horse, which is a little bit more cut down, low, footrests in more of a kind of middle position. I've already mentioned adventure bikes, sports bikes, that's my world. Cruisers is new to me, and there's a lot of things about it that are very different to the rest of the motorcycling world. One, they don't tell you how much power they make on the spec sheet, and that pretty much sets the tone for what these bikes are all about. You don't buy one of these because it's got 220 horsepower and it's gonna be amazing. You buy one because it's gonna feel nice to ride because you're gonna enjoy the ride two places rather than being worried about how fast you went around that last corner or how far you rode through the desert. Another big difference in this world, engine capacity. These are almost 1900cc bikes. <laughs> it's a monstrous engine. And when you fire them up and hear them running, there's this sort of presence and force that you can kind of feel from the bikes. They're not a little thing zinging around at a million RPM. They're big thumping bikes. I'm actually really excited to ride these because I've ridden a few big V-twins from other manufacturers in the cruiser market. And everyone tells me that these Indians are a bit more fast, a bit more aggressive. They've still got a little bit of that exciting edge that those who followed my stuff on the FTR will know it surprised me and I fell in love with it. So I'm excited to see if these can still have a little bit of a performance edge to put a smile on my face. Once again, as with the FTRs recently, we've been helping Indy and doing a bit of filming and marketing material for these bikes. The flip side to that is meant we're allowed a sneak peek at them kind of early. These are the first ones in the country. This one, the Dark Horse, is probably the most relatable for me and definitely for more mainstream motorcyclists. It's not got a really extreme big wide bars feet forward riding position. It's got a more normal feet kind of in the middle, fairly narrow handlebars compared to the other two. It's kind of a street cruiser. It's definitely one that you could see yourself putting some racing shocks on the back of, make it a bit more of a, a racy fast road bike out of. This is the one that's gonna give you the most kind of fast road riding joy out of the three Chiefs available. It's also the cheapest, coming in just over 15,000 pounds. So for a bike as a base to modify and to cut up and make your own, it's gonna be the most popular bet. Power figures, Indian don't officially release one. It's gonna be around 90-ish horsepower. That's not the story. Torque figures, 164 newton meters of torque. That's pretty impressive. And the weight, almost as impressive as the torque. We're the wrong side of 200 kilos with the wrong side of 300 kilos. They're not lightweight bikes. These are big, solid motorcycles. Something that's shared across all three of the, the Chief models is the new touchscreen dash. I think it's a really, really nice blend of modern technology and old styling. Turn the bike on, you get a little display scrolls through, a little Indian logo pops up and uh, some pretty pictures. And then you've got a really nice functional TFT dash that's also touchscreen. If it's the same as the one on the FTR, which I'm sure Indian aren't are gonna have gone backwards with that technology, that touchscreen is really good even in gloves, even when you're riding along. It's actually pretty easy to use and pretty intuitive. Like the dash, a couple of other electronic niceties featured across all three bikes. One, cruise control, they're cruisers. You can control your cruising, that's always a good thing. And secondly, something that I actually really like is keyless ignition. Let's have a look at the second model, the Dark Horse Bobber. Not hugely different to the Dark Horse, save for the monkey bars, the massive ape hanger handlebars, which I think you either love them or you hate them. I have to confess, I've got a little bit of a guilty, <laughs> a guilty pleasure in them. I do quite like the look of them. And I don't know if it's the novelty, but something about riding with big, big dangly bars does put a smile on my face. And hey, in for a penny, in for a pound. If we're going for Cruiser World, why not go feet forward? easy rider and pretend it's 1970s. I might start smoking dope and grow a mullet. That's a little bit unfair. The cruiser world has moved on from that, but that bike has that kind of cult cliche feel of big, big bars, big smile on your face, cruising down the highway in a silly open face lid. 
The other thing I do really like about the Bobber version of the Dark Horse is the spoked wheels. Probably the uh, dirt bike rider in me being obsessed with them, but I really like that kind of spoked wheel look. It gives a bit more of a classic feel to the bike. Speaking of classic feel, at the other end of the range to this one is the Super Chief. That one's just shy of £20,000, but for that you get a bike that does the cool cruisery custom bike thing, but is designed to carry a bit of distance as well. That bike for me is probably the most inspiring. It's the one that you want to take on a big road trip. Massive screen, even bigger bars. It's got foot boards, not even foot pegs. You've got foot boards you can walk around on them. You don't get that on an R6. And you sit there behind your big screen with your beers in this one and your sleeping bag in that one. And you ride off in search of a good time. That bike is the most classic looking of the three. Spoked wheels, lots of chrome, and the big bags on the side. You might be watching this video going, cruisers, no thanks mate, I like going around corners. Or you might be watching it thinking, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll give that a try. I think the bottom line is everyone owes it to themselves to at least go and try one. Whether it's the stripped down kind of cool city bike, the slightly novelty but brilliant bobber, or the big cruisy chief. These are definitely three bikes that are outside of my comfort zone, but I think I'm going to, and I think you guys should, try one, see what it's like. Even if you come out and go, nope, I'm quite happy with horsepower and low handlebars, then perfect. But you've got to give this stuff a go because face it, I wouldn't have tried an FTR before and it's probably one of my favorite bikes now. Here it is, this is me, this is my guilty pleasure. I'm gonna start painting things on my arms, I'm gonna grow a mullet and embrace the world of the cruiser. <laughs> Check back in a year's time to see if I'm recognizable. <laughs>